So you need to deploy maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand new Windows 10 machines and you wanna carry over all of those user settings, documents, and application settings. Hi, I'm Wes Bryan, Edutainer at IT Pro TV, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the USMT or the User State Migration Tool. We've gone ahead and we pulled up the Microsoft documentation for what's known as the user state migration tool. And it is a tool that allows you to migrate the settings that I mentioned in our intro. Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is this documentation is pretty extensive and we're going to keep the links in the description below. However, I want to kind of demystify some of this and we'll not just show you how to read a document, but show you how to actually do this. So we're going to, um, we, we will keep all of this information available for you too. Now, I do want to say, ahead of time. If you only have to maybe um, deploy a couple of computers, maybe you're doing this for a very small office, maybe 10 computers max. Well, Microsoft doesn't recommend the complexities of the user state migration tool because it's for, well, more than 10, a lot of times hundreds, if not thousands of computers, because it's it you can script it, you can automate it, and you can make it really easy for large deployments. So one of the things in the past that they've said that you could use is something known as the Windows Easy Transfer. Well, this information right here is going to make it a little bit difficult to use the Windows easy transfer and that's because it's not in Windows 10 anymore however don't fret Microsoft does have something for you and uh, that's something known as lap link uh, and this is their PC mover Express and we'll put this documentation in here too uh, and one of the things that you can kind of see here is that it does say that it is a free download unless you're using it commercially then you're gonna have to pay a commercial license so if you have to do this just for you know a single computer it's an easy way to do a very quick, easy point and click wizard type migration, but that's not what you're here for. So let's go ahead and what do you say we get started? Now, one of the first things that you have to do in your uh, environment is you have to download and install what is known as a portion of the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit or the ADK. Now I'm on my Windows 10 machine and let me go ahead and uh, we'll get logged in here real quick and I'll get logged into my account. And here on my desktop, one of the things you're gonna see is that we have acquired the executable for the ADK, that's the Assessment and Deployment Kit and the USMT or the User State Migration Tool, it's a part of this bundle here. So it is gonna require an internet connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fire this off just by double clicking this executable here and you're gonna see that it starts this wizard now it gives you a default location of where you're going to install this and I do want you to pay attention to this path here notice it's in program files x86 backslash windows kits backslash 10 uh, that is going to be an important area because we actually have to navigate that uh, to that location inside of a command prompt when we're going to use the user state migration tool so we'll go ahead and say next to the wizard pay attention to the, to the disk space that it's going to use we're not going to use much because we're not going to download the entire uh, deployment kit. All right, now the other thing it's going to ask you, the next thing is the uh, CIEP, the Customer in, uh, Experience Improvement Program, that's the CEIP. And you can opt into this. I'm going to opt into this just because I'm, I'm doing research all the time and I don't mind them collecting the data. That might not be something that you can do according to your corporate security policies. So just pay attention to your organization there. And then we're just going to accept the end user license agreement here and you can see we have a whole bunch of tools. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do is uncheck every single one of these. And what I like about this is it gives you a small description about what these do, but the one that I specifically want here is the user state migration tool. You'll see the USMT, uh, and it includes a few of these tools. It includes something known as scan state, load state, and some of the background utilities. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about these coming up, and I'll show you uh, some of the files that are uh, also associated with this. It is a just over a uh, half a gig in size. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose install. Now it does require administrative level privileges and I'm in a standard user account. So I'm gonna go ahead and just elevate real quick. Elevate those privileges so we can fire off the insta the installation. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna reach out to Microsoft servers and it's gonna check its manifest, if you will, or catalog. And it's gonna say, okay, what was it that you wanted to download? In our case, we chose just to focus on the USMT. I encourage you that if you are currently studying, maybe you're a student, maybe you're studying for a Microsoft exam, maybe you're just curious, download them all. If, you've had the, if you have the drive space, the storage space on your machine, nothing gonna hurt by downloading the extra tools. However, just keep in mind at this point in time, this video is only focused on the USMT, which is why we're going ahead and just gonna leave it right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and choose close. Uh, you could open up the getting started guide, but that's kind of what I'm here for. I'll help you get started with this utility. Now, let me set a scenario up for you, all right? I've logged in with my user account, right? 
let's go ahead and let's create uh, let's create a few things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up File Explorer. And in File Explorer, I'm going to navigate to my Documents folder. And what do you say we just go ahead and we create a document, and I'll call it Secrets. And we'll put some information in it here. And I'll just put 11 herbs and spices. We want to save that. That's an important recipe. All right, we'll choose Save. So I've got a document here, and what we're doing is we're just trying to create a couple of documents so that you can see how this works. Next thing I'm going to do is just create a bitmap image, and I'll say this is my, uh, well, bitmap, because I'm that creative on the fly there. <laughs> and we'll right-click, and I'm going to choose a one more. Uh, let's just go ahead and choose a rich text document, and I'll just call this my uh, RTF file. Okay, nothing big. Again, just for the purposes of getting something in here so you can see exactly what we're doing. Now... On a larger scale, you probably have 100 users, thousands of users, and they probably have uh, user settings and application settings that are maybe specific to their machine and their environment. I realize that in a corporate environment, typically documents aren't going to be saved on a local computer. They're probably on a file server somewhere, but it'll show you the power of the USMT nonetheless. So now we've got our documents, right? Uh, we've got the things that we want to save. Now it's time to use the USMT. And there are a couple of things that we're going to use. Let me go ahead and switch over here. Uh, I've actually got uh, the, the utilities and what their uh, commands kind of look like. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what we need to do. All right. The first utility that we use is what's known as scan state. And scan state, what it does is it scans the state of the computer. Imagine that it's named appropriately, but it scans the state of the computer and it scans for your user settings, it scans for your documentations as well as application specific settings as well. And these, uh, what it actually saves are denoted by these files. And there's one called migapp.xml, it's an extensible markup language. There's another one called MIG Docs, and that's your document settings. The MIG app, that's your application settings. And then there's one other one in here, and you don't see it on the screen. And I just want to go ahead and call it out, and that is MIG uh, user dot xml and then finally there's this one that you see up here this by the way this first line this is what you're going to get off of the microsoft documentation we'll disseminate this and make it a little bit more meaningful now if i decide that i do not want to include things that are already in these files i can generate a config.xml file now please understand that's going to be generated by scan state but not used by scan state let me say that one more time. It's going to be generated, the config file, by scan state, but it's not used by scan state. It'll be used by the next utility, load state. And what load state will do is it'll look at these three uh, XML files and say, hey, what am I supposed to save? But then it'll also look at the config file and say, was there anything that Wes decided that he didn't want to save? Let me go ahead and exclude those. So that's how you exclude files as well. Let's go ahead and travel on over to our machine here. Let's see where these are actually located here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up uh, our um, file explorer. And I'm going to navigate down into local disk C. And let me see if I can increase the font just a little bit and make it a little easier to see. All right. And we're going to go down into the programs x86 file. And we're going to go into kits. Or, or excuse me, I'm sorry, Windows Kits specifically. And then from Windows Kits, you're going to see that there is this 10, right? This is what we want. We want, notice it's 10. Uh, we got to keep in mind that the version, USMT works on different versions of Windows. So pay attention to the Windows USMT that is right for your operating system, your version of Windows. Then we're going to go into the Assessment and Deployment Kit. All right, and you'll see in here there is the User State Migration Tool. And then there are different platforms. Works on AMD 64, which is essentially 64-bit machines. It also works on ARM-based 64-bit uh, uh, processors, too, for mobile deployment, uh, as well as x86. So that's your 32-bit. That's what these three different folders are here. Now, if I get down into XMA, uh, or I'm sorry, AMD 64, our 64-bit architecture, you're going to see that here's that MIG app file. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open one of these. MIG app, we're just going to right click on it. We're going to choose uh, open. And then let me just make this a little bit larger for us to see. And you can see it's basically just a set of XML documentation. And if you ever want to figure out what is it that it's actually taking off of the computer, what is it migrating, you can just follow these little uh, less than symbols with the, the exclamation point here. Notice it says, hey, we're going to, if you have Office Word 16, 
1832-bit, uh, uh, these are the settings that we're gonna save, right? So you can see that it just defines what is going to be saved and what is going to be taken off the machine. And there's MIG app, You'll see in here that there's MIG docs. There's the third one that, or the second one that I was talking about. And then there's MIG user here as well. So all three of these documents work in a uh, combination with each other. The one that is not here is the config.xml. Remember, that's gonna be generated by scan state if you choose to exclude locations. Um, and then you see you have scan state, and you have load state. These two different applications and these three files, uh, potentially four if you generate the config file, uh, they make up the heart of the functionality uh, that you would be interacting with as a, an IT tech. So let's, what do you say? We go ahead and we do a little bit of migration. The other part of this is you have to have a file store set up, like a file server, and I've got a Windows server here uh, in the background. So we'll go ahead and what we're gonna do, we'll get logged into our Windows server. Uh, and uh, let me make sure that's the right server. And what we'll do is we'll set up our file share. Now, um, this really isn't an episode on permissions. Make sure that you set up the permissions and sh NTFS and share permissions appropriately. Uh, what I'm doing just for this purposes of, of this show uh, is I'm just gonna create a new folder. We're gonna call it MIG store. All right, and then I'm gonna right click on it, choose properties, and I'm gonna set the sharing permissions via the advanced sharing um, button, or if you will, in the properties on the sharing tab. And I'll share this folder out, and we're just gonna keep the, the share name the same. We're gonna keep it MIG store, but then I'm gonna make sure that I modify the permissions so that for this purpose, everybody has full control and we'll go ahead and choose apply. But now we need the local NTFS permissions also to reflect the appropriate level of access that we wanna give. And again, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose edit, select users, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, users the modify option here so that they can actually write this, this to this folder as you need. Implement principle at least privilege. Again, that's for another episode, but this at least gets that store ready to go so that we can use it in order to migrate those settings. And when I run the migration tool, scan state, it's gonna load these up, uh, these um, uh, settings into that migration store that we just created. So now that that's done, we can go over here and uh, we can launch up an administrative command prompt. So I'm gonna type CMD and I'm gonna hit control shift enter because you have to be an administrator. And again, I'm not logged in as an administrator. I'm logged in as a standard user and I just, I'm elevating my privileges here in the background. Now, once we've got that done, the next thing that we have to do is we have to navigate to uh, the uh, the location of the USMT. Uh, and that's why this next part is gonna be, uh, they're all important steps, but you have to re make sure that you're in the right location or your command prompt's gonna say, I don't know what scan state is. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna use the absolute path. Uh, so we're gonna do a CD, C colon, right? Change directory, C colon backslash, and I'm gonna use my tab key just to make it easier. Uh, those of you that have watched some of my shows on IT Pro TV's uh, website probably know I don't type the best. Uh, program files, then we're gonna do Windows kits, backslash 10, backslash for us, because we're on a 64-bit machine, I'm just gonna type in AMD, oh, oh, I'm sorry, got ahead of myself. Assessment and deployment kit, you're gonna see this is gonna get kind of big here, backslash, user state migration tool, there we go. And then this is where the architecture comes in when we do AMD, you'll see AMD 64. Uh, and now we're in that location. And if I just do a DIR and we'll pipe this out to, uh, let's pipe this out to more so it doesn't dump too much out of it uh, out on the screen here. You can see, here, here are those, at, those um, executables that we were talking about. There's the load state, MIG app, MIG docs here. And we should see, there, there's scan state coming up as well. Uh, yeah, so MIG user uh, as well. So there you see those three files that we're talking about. All right, now at this point, we're gonna run, and uh, let me go ahead and just kind of quit out of this and I'll clear our screen. We're gonna run this command, all right? Now, in the documentation, it looks like this. Again, let me kind of break this down because this is what I'm going to run, all right? It says, back, you're gonna put the UNC path to the migration store, so backslash, backslash, computer name, backslash, share name. In my, in my case, the server's name is MBRSRV, member server for short. 
And then it's so it's backslash backslash my server's name backslash MIG store. You've seen us create the shared file or shared folder on the uh, file server in order to put the USMT migration files up there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this as an example. I'm not migrating any application settings, but if I was, I would use the forward slash I colon MIG app dot XML file. In this case, we do want MIG docs. You can put both of them in, and if you don't have application settings, um, it's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to say, hey, if I see settings, I'm going to migrate them. I'm going to include them in the bundle. If they're not there, it's not going to hurt anything. And then what version that you're using. And then finally, this is a very important one I would have too. That is a log file. And it will dump a log file down in the path that we just navigated so that if you run into errors, you should be able to just kind of parse through that file and find out what the error code is. And then you can always go out to Microsoft documentation and you can find out what the answer is. So. What do you say? We're going to go ahead and we're going to run this command right here. So let's switch back over to our machine and I'm going to run scan state. All right. Space backslash backslash. And we're going to go ahead and we are um, going to run our um, the, the scan state with the migration store. And let me go ahead real quick. And what I want to do here is on this VM, I want to make sure that it is connected uh, to our internal network. And, and that's also always something to uh, make sure. Uh, you, one of the things that you will notice is that uh, if you aren't connected to the uh, store, this isn't going to run appropriately. So that's expected. I have a multi-home computer, one connected to the internet to download the ADK, one connected to the internal network that connects back to the file server. In this case, what you've seen me do, I just disabled the external adapter because I don't need that. All right. Now, Back to scan state, we're going to type scan state space and then the UNC pass. So in this case, it's MBR SRV backslash and our migration store. I just named it MIG store again, just because, well, I'm not too creative on that part. <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a space in there and we're going to say forward slash. What I want to do is I colon and I'm going to do uh, MIG app dot xml just to put it in there and show you that this is how you would do the application settings if you wanted to i don't have application settings that i'm going to save but it's it's okay for uh, our demonstration purposes then a space and a forward slash i colon uh and then it's going to be mig doc uh oh and and you know what what is interesting it is it, it is mig app not apps mig app but then with the mig uh, migration of your documents, it is MIG docs, plural. So just watch your uh, syntax on there. I know it's hung me up a couple of times figuring out why didn't it work. Uh, then a space forward slash and the version, we're going to do V13, a V colon 13, space forward slash L for the log. And then I'm just going to put, I'm going to call it uh, colon scan dot log. All right, and what we're going to do is after that, we're going to go ahead and run this. And you'll notice what it says right here. It says starting the migration process. Now, if it hangs right here and it doesn't do anything, and I've had this happen, so I just, I just want you to be aware, it's probably not going to succeed like this is. All right, you're probably going to get an error. And if I remember right, I want to say it's error 27. 27 or 26. It's, it's one of those two. And that typically is an error that says you didn't set the file permissions right on the migration store because USMT, what did it do? It tried to scrape all these or migrate. I call them scrape, migrate all these settings off. And then it tries to load them up into that migration store, the shared folder that we just created. If you don't have access or USMT doesn't have access to that shared folder, this will error out. Here's another thing. Why might the permissions be set wrong? If you know the permissions are set right, chances are you're not an administrative user and you don't have access to that file share. And by association, the application and the context that you're running it doesn't have access to it either. Uh, so it'll fail. Looks like everything is good. What do you say? We go ahead and we hop on over to the migration store that we have um, used. All right. And what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and let's switch over to our migration store. This is on our file server. And if we get into that MIG store, you're going to see that there's a USMT file there now. All right. Notice we have user state migration tool. All right. That's what we want. Now, 
That is half of the part, half of the uh, uh, the process. The other process is now you're going to deploy a brand new Windows 10 machine. Oh, and by the way, this goes all the way back to Windows 7. USMT has versions that could scrape Windows 7 settings as well. Uh, you shouldn't be running Windows 7 by now, but if you are, just keep in mind you do have options. Now the point, uh, the next thing that we have to do is we have to make it kind of like our Windows 10 machine is a brand new machine. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this uh, command prompt down and I've got a snapshot on this machine that basically will return it to before my user ever logged into this machine at all. And there's a reason we're doing this. This would be a brand new machine and we've never logged into it, right? So the first time I log into it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see, are my settings there? And your end users out there will do the same thing. They're gonna find out, all right, where are all my settings? Where are all my documentation? Where's my files, right? And if you've logged into, to, into it for the first time, you're not gonna have any of that information. And that's where load state comes in. So what do you say? We go ahead and uh, we will log in, but I'm gonna log in as myself. And one of the things you're gonna notice is that when I log in as myself, you should see that it builds my profile again. If it doesn't build my profile, that means I've already, there we go, that's what we wanna see. This is the first time, this is what a user sees, the first time you deploy a computer, right? You've probably seen this before, if you've been watching before, maybe you've watched some of the IT Pro TV episodes in our course library, when you install a new operating system and you launch it for the first time, this is what's known as the OOBE. IT has enough acronyms, that's the out of box experience. It's essentially saying, hey, it's still got the new car smell. What it doesn't have are your settings, doesn't have your documents, your user settings, your application settings, and last but not least, it doesn't have any of your documents. And that's why we need to use scan state in order to, or excuse me, load state in order to pull that information back down. So let me go ahead, and if I open up things like File Explorer and I go to my Documents folder, notice what's not, what isn't there. I don't have my secret recipe with my uh, 11 herbs and spices there. I don't have my bitmap or my rich text document. All of that is gone, right? And that's where we're hoping load state is going to help us out here. So what I need to do is I actually need to, let me go over to where the ADK uh, executable, the, the assessment and deployment kit, uh, was and here's our ADK setup and what we're going to do is we're going to essentially repeat the process that we did when we installed the USMT. So same thing, nothing uh, has changed here. We're just going to next to the wizard. If you aren't familiar with what we're doing here, uh, pause it, rewind, go back to the first part where we installed uh, ADK on our uh, machine at first. I'm going to go ahead uncheck all of these except for the USMT. And then what we will do is we will install. Now, again, it's asking me for administrator, uh, administrator level privileges, so I need to escalate. We'll go ahead and do that. And what it's going to do now is it's going to, just like we did at first, it's going to reach out to Microsoft servers and it's going to download the USMT. And then we're going to go ahead and what we'll do is we'll run our load state on this machine and we'll connect back to the migration store and pull down those user documents in this case, which is what we decided that we were going to migrate. Plan your migration strategies appropriately. This is just a simple de uh, um, demonstration of how to use the tool. There's a lot more complexities when it comes to large migrations. All right, we're going to go ahead and choose close here, and uh, we're going to navigate to that location where the USMT is installed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll type CMD in our instant search field here, and we'll do a control shift enter. I want to escalate the privileges to an administrative level command prompt. Remember, that's going to be required to use the USMT. Uh, if it fails, that's probably going to be one of those reasons it, it fails on you uh, if you are not an administrator. So again, with all of my settings being completely reset, you'll notice that I'm going back to the beginning here, even resetting my command prompt so that you can see what's going on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to that same location. It's going to be CD space C colon backslash program files x86 backslash windows kits. and backslash 10, backslash assessment and deployment kit, backslash user state migration tool, backslash AMD 64, and we'll hit enter. 
Now the last part of this is we're going to run this command, the load state command, and it's going to reach out to that server and hopefully it's going to pull down those settings. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll run load state space backslash backslash 10, or uh, excuse me, let me uh, use the host name here, uh, MBR SRV backslash MIG store space forward slash I colon MIG app dot XML space forward slash I colon MIG docs plural dot XML space forward slash V 13 space forward slash L colon scan dot log. And just to be sure, uh, when you have, uh, sometimes when you have a multi-home computer, it, uh, it might prioritize which network adapter uh, is running. So I'm gonna ensure that our, the, the network adapter that we're using is the, on the internal network here. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this command. All right, and what we see here is that it is starting the migration process. Now, pay attention. Notice where it does say that the logs uh, are being sent, and what it's doing is it's reaching out to that migration store, and it's actually pulling down any application settings and any documents. And not only the documents for my user account, but remember, we didn't specify and say, just do Wes Bryan's account. We said, do the administrative account, do the public account, do all the accounts on this machine. So also keep that in mind. If you have 10 accounts on a single machine, it's gonna scrape them all. And one of the things I would uh, recommend is don't include music and videos. <laughs> remember that this is a business and uh, those documents are more important. I know some people might uh, disagree with me, but the documents are a lot more important than those videos. And again, uh, the music uh, uh, collection, it really could generate a, a pretty hefty migration process. Now I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and I want you to notice something here. If I open up my file explorer and go to documents, notice what I have. I have my bitmap, I've got the new rich text document that I just created, and if I open up secrets, I have my 11 herbs and spices back. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how you download, install, use, and ex successfully deploy the user state migration tool. If you like the information that you've seen here today, be sure to check out all of our Windows 10 how-to videos and subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. Thanks for watching.